damage. That got away? The recordings that got away? Yeah. Just got oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Because if it wasn't for me keeping up with all those cassette tapes that I did all those years, boy, we'd all be in trouble. <laughs> we have no idea what happens. You yeah, had to lock him in a in a fire secure safe, man. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay, I'm gonna let everybody in. All right, bring them on. Keep talking. Okay. Keep chatting. <laughs> Holy cow, there are a lot of boxes on my screen. Whoa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, I already see some What's of up? my guys. Yeah. What's up, JB? What's up, JB? <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up? My little shooter. From okay. Yeah, what's up, man? What's up, sir? Auxiliary coming through the loudspeakers in here. Oh, so um, man, we've got we've got Eichstead. Eichstead is in the house. Uh, fantastic. Nice. All right. So I'll give it I'll give it <coughs> just a couple minutes, and then I'll start with the introduction of Marcus or all that. Man, we super cool. Ooh, we yellow. <laughs> <laughs> we yellow. Is there a way to spotlight it? I think our AirPods are just cool. It's browned out. Can you see it's best? I think it's better than that. I can't. It's better than that. It's better than that. I forgot I knew people in Germany. Some people reached out to me and said they were going to come. Oh, I forgot the game. Oh, she's still right there. You can go and visit me. Sonst muss ich aufpassen, hier ist live, Alter. Ja, hier ist live, Alter. Bevor, bevor, bevor der Turner da noch, bevor der Turner da noch ohne Maske einfach reinslidet, Alter. Ich habe schon Kohle bezahlt, keine Sorge, es, es bleibt unter uns. Alles unter uns. Okay. 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 I'll give it another minute or two, and then, and then I'll start. I think that there's still some people coming in, right, Melanie? Yeah, okay. People coming in, people sliding through, man. Oh, wow. People sliding on the Zoom block. We had the Zoom block. Zoom projects tonight, man. And I flew out to the field to grab all these images. And we got to talking like, you know, deep, deep into the conversation. We just took it somewhere else. I'm like, that's all that question you had asked me, though. Know, I'll try to speak to it, though. You know what you said? So far, yeah. All right. DJ Spanish Fly. DJ Spanish Fly. The journalist, Jared Boy. No OG, OG, OG. You already know what it is, man. Hell yeah. And skinny Prince. All right. So I'm going to start right now. Ah, super. That's just, I mean, it's so cool to see people who are obviously in Memphis and people who are obviously in Germany and people who are obviously somewhere else. It's just like that's the silver lining of the pandemic is you can do these things and bring people together. It's great. So uh, I would like to start now. Um, if people drift in, that's fine, but we've got some things to do, so I want to get it underway. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Melanie Conroy, um, who is Associate Professor of French and also Interim Director of the Marcus Orr Center for the Humanities for helping to put this all together. Um, the Marcus Orr Center for the Humanities does a lecture series every semester that features really, really great speakers. Um, we've had people from all across the United States, uh, from Argentina, and now from Memphis. And where are you, Skinny? I'm in Germany. In I know, but North where exactly? Uh, actually, we call it, it's called the uh, Odenwald. We out here Odenwald. in the countryside, yeah, in the Odenwald. It's, mm -hmm. like, uh, it's like 40 miles away from Heidelberg. It's, it's a big countryside. We're out here 
in the woods, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and, we're, and we're in here on Zoom. So that's the kind of thing that Marcus Orr does, support it, it's great stuff. Uh, thank you all for coming. Um, my name is Robert Kells. Uh, I'm associate director of German, or associate uh, professor of German, associate director of international studies. And what I'm going to do right now is just introduce the, the various uh, participants in this event. I'll play uh, a little music, and then I will turn it over to Jerry Boyd to handle what I think is going to be a very vibrant discussion. Um, and after uh, that is done, we will have time for some questions and answers from the audience. So we're going to get it going right now. Um, our guest joining us from Memphis, DJ Spanish Fly, is a seminal Memphis hip hop artist and DJ. He was making Memphis hip hop before most people knew that such a thing existed. Um, and as hip hop scholar, Andrew Nazitsky, known online as Nas, has written, it is difficult to imagine what Memphis rap would sound like without the influence of DJ Spanish Fly. Serving as a house DJ at M-Time Club's No Name and Expo in the late 1980s and early 90s, Fly spearheaded a generational transition from the disco era towards a slower, more aggressive sound driven by 808 thuds and gangster themes. His taste helped to outline a loose mold of bass heavy menace that later day Memphis acts like DJ Zerk, 3-6 Mafia, or much later, I would say people like Yo Gotti too, uh, turned this into a city defining underground hustle. Um, the sound spread from Memphis to trunks around the country and embedded itself deeply into the DNA of contemporary Southern rap. Um, and Nas himself, you know, remarked that's a long way. It's been 30 years of that sound, 30 plus really. And he asked Fly what he thought accounted for that longevity and Fly responded, it's the sound. That's it. Forever and amen. And so I think by way of introduction, I also want to play some of that sound. Um, and I want to start uh, just with a, shall we say an advisory, which is you can turn down the volume on your computer, you can go get a coffee, you can have some mate. Uh, you will hear words that you do not hear on Disney. Um, in my opinion, to not play music or art for that reason really is an act of censorship. I think it's ostracization. I would argue it's denigration. We're here in academia and in education um, to be open. We're here to have dialogue. We're here to exchange opinions. And we are not here to shut anybody out. So what I'm going to do is play first uh, about the first onion, or the first onion, the first minute of smoking onion. Smoking onion. Smoking onion. And then I'm going to go to Memphis Gangster Walk for about two minutes, and then we'll finish it out with a version of Trigger Man, uh, which features both DJ Spanish Fly and Skinny Finster. So, skinny, skinny, no, 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 no. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go right now to the music. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna try and make sure this all works. I'm going to start off with smoking onion. Here we go. Oh, 
was smoking onions and now I'm gonna go to a bit of Memphis Gangsta Walk. Uh, the music is phenomenal on this. Also look at the dancing. Oh it's gorgeous. Okay here we go. <laughs> to move on to introduce uh, our next guest, who you heard at the tail end of that track, the second clip is Skinny Finster, who is one of Germany's uh, hottest up and coming hip hop artists. Uh, Skinny Finster uh, creates Memphis style rap in German. He is a universal music recording artist. He has been the subject of feature length uh, pieces in prominent German music media, such as the hip hop magazine Juice, such as Laut uh, De, such as Backspin. Um, his newest uh, album, I think newest, 2020 release, is Feuerkraft or Firepower. Yes. Um, yes, all right. And I'd also like to mention, uh, well, first of all, that you can hear that. I mean, you can hear that anywhere. Just put it in your browser, put it in your phone, it'll come up anywhere. Um, he, uh, he's also, and I think this is important for our conversation, a vigorous supporter of preserving Memphis music heritage. I think we could see on uh, especially that clip from, from Memphis Gangster Walk, 
a lot of the historical record of this music, which is so influential, is really precarious. Like you can imagine how many videos got lost, how many videos were never made, how many videos were destroyed or damaged. So I think to preserve that heritage is a, is a really urgent and necessary undertaking. Uh, so that's also worth mentioning. Um, we're gonna start uh, an arguably most important introduction because without his work, I don't think this event would be happening is the journalist, Jared Boyd. Jared uh, of the Daily Memphian will moderate our conversation today. He's uh, an arts and um, culture columnist at the Daily Memphian and he is program manager for the radio station WYXR 91.7 FM whose vision, as Boyd himself states, is to truly, purely, and honestly represent Memphis and its surrounding area. Or put another way, when asked about his station's format, Boyd responded, our format is Memphis. I will paste uh, links to his pieces about WYXR and Skinny Finsta in the chat. And now, Jared, I'm gonna be quiet and let you roll. Hey, Robert, thank you so much uh, for really setting the stage uh, as far as context uh, for what can, for a lot of people, be pretty complicated as far as, uh, you know, sort of understanding not only where Fence is coming from, but, but what has happened here in Memphis, uh, that we can have a hip hop movement that's been so global and so important uh, to so many people uh, and really sort of brings uh, to the front of my mind just how important a moment like this is uh, to be able to truly give people an understanding of, of how a very local thing can become very global and live in, in 2021 uh, in a place where, you know, something, something it, it almost is like the internet owns it now. Uh, the, the globe owns it now and the world owns it now. And, and you know, uh, as you mentioned earlier, you know, so much of this media, whether it be video or audio, uh, has been lost, uh, mishandled, uh, who knows, set out on a, on a, on a dashboard of, of Opal Astra somewhere and, and <laughs> it uh, melted in the sun. So you just never know what you have until it's gone. And, and sometimes you need someone uh, wow. like a skinny fence to, wow. to reflect back to you uh, what you had and, and what's really important and, and, and yeah. how it can resonate with people. Uh, so thank you, Robert. Uh, thank you, Melanie. Thank you uh, for everyone at the university. Uh, and thank you, Skinny, for, for making time to be available today. And thank you, Spanish Fly, for being with us. And thanks to everyone on the call. I saw some some names already that I know, and I've gotten some messages already. I forgot I knew some some folks out in Germany showing love. What's up, Philip? What's up, Sully? Uh, Alan here in town, and and for everyone else, uh, thank you so much. Uh, Skinny, how does it feel? Because I, I I definitely uh, you know I underestimated your excitement for having Spanish fly here. I thought you'd be excited to talk to me, but you you're really excited to see this guy. Okay. Tell me tell me how you're feeling right in this moment. Man, man, words can't describe, man, how nice it is to see my big OG DJ Spanish Fly again, man. I really miss him, man. I wanted to come back to Memphis, then the Rona hit, man, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm very thankful to be in this session today with Spanish Fly, man. And, yeah, man, looking forward to it, man. Let's get it. Uh, I want to violate a similar question to you, uh, uh, Fly. Um... Did you ever imagine when you were creating the Memphis hip hop sound and just to, as a footnote, this is the man who created it. Uh, did you ever imagine that you would see someone from Heidelberg, Germany, able to relate to the sound and to the style? Yes. Really? Yes, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. But I wouldn't expect it to be skinny. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, but yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I have people come to, up to me all the time. Uh, it's a guy telling me, Fly, I wish I could pay you. I wish I could pay you for all of those cassettes that I was dubbing over in Germany when I was over there fighting and when we was stationed over there years ago. 
I wish I could pay you for all those cassettes that I dubbed of yours and sold to those people in Germany years ago. Mm -hmm. And that touched me. I was like, are you serious? And he's affiliated with a, a, a big time rap group out of Memphis. I'm not gonna call any names, but back then my music was way over there. So for Skinny to be uh, so loyal and so of a fan of this Memphis music, it proves this guy right. He was in the service and the service guys used to come to Club No Name where I DJed at and get those cassettes and buy them from me. And they'll come back and say, man, all of my cassette tapes is gone. I need more. <laughs> so they would be taking these cassettes cross seas. And that just gives me a stamp of approval. Stan Skinny, this guy right here, I love you to death. Uh, and I call you my nephew, my, you're my nephew. But that just gives me a stamp of approval that way long time ago, the seed was planted and uh the music was out there the smoking onion and all that was out there the gangster walk and all that was out there but skinny them you know like mom and dad and them probably was bumping it and skinny was just like these young kids who was here in memphis your little yo goddies he's just like your little yo goddies and 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 who all the rest of them who grow up listening to their parents who was fans of mine. So that's why the kids had no other choice but to hear this SHI blank. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's it, and then and then what captured what captured Skinny's and their mom's ear with my music was, I gotta say, it was original, it was different. And you know, really, everybody really wants to be different, but they're scared to be different. You know, uh, different uh, is not the thing. Original is not the thing. But that's pretty much how. And that's just that's just touched me how. So, in other words, I influence you, but you all are really influencing me. Well, that's interesting because you Skinny know, Neal. in my in my past interview with Skinny, um, you're correct. Uh, maybe not necessarily Skinny's parents, but some of the older That's kids, my cousin. yeah, some my of the cousin. older kids from where you came from, right. uh, you, you know, introduced to this music, but you also mentioned Skinny that uh, sort of your first introduction to the American South hip hop styles, Atlanta and other styles was from some of the people in the military who were stationed in yes. your area. Could you take me yeah. back to growing up in that area and sort of seeing how American people were interacting with music and with your area? Yes, exactly. <laughs> he loved it. <laughs> Go ahead, Skinny. Yeah. I might tell me that question again, man. Wait. I couldn't really hear you, it. You remember when we Look first up. talked, you mentioned that there are people yeah. in America, there, there are Americans stationed nearby where you grew up who were, you know, they were listening to Atlanta kind of crunk music and that yeah. sort of thing. And before uh, you were introduced to the more uh, underground Memphis, Memphis sound, you were getting familiar with what the sound of the South in America was. Exactly, exactly. Because yeah, we, we, we are in Heidelberg. We had like the US forces main headquarter. Uh, they were stationed in Europe. So I've seen all these guys riding around in big cars and, and bumping their like that South <laughs> music, especially that Atlanta music, because it was like the, the early 2000s, mid 2000s. <laughs> So people were riding around in big cars and bumping that music. And I was hearing it. I was like, dang, that sounds so different from the, from the German uh, hip hop music. Uh, we already knew it was some completely more, it was more bumpy. It had that funk, it had that bass. And yeah, I, f I immediately fell in love with that. So, so that, these were the first contacts where I was like hearing it from bumping outside the trunk, you know, and then like, uh, with my older cousin, like really getting into it, when he showed me some three six mafia CDs in the early <laughs> right. yeah, man. He, 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 he pushed the play button on that CD. I heard it for like ten seconds, man. I was gone. I was gone. I was like, that's the shit I want to hear forever in my yeah. life, all yeah. day, every day, and get high to it. Yeah. <laughs> So, so Skinny, about what age were you when you were first introduced to, to Memphis music specifically? So 
I was in in high school, so I think I was around like uh, 11 to 12 years old when I got introduced to that. Yeah, were my early teenagers. Yeah, definitely. I was still very young. Yeah, but prior prior to being introduced to this music, were you interested specifically in any sort of German popular music or traditional music? Was that something that you had taken to at all? Uh, not really. I mean, I, I grew up with my grandmother. So I always had like some traditional German music, but this didn't catch my ears right, you know? I was not feeling it. And when I heard that Memphis sound or that South sound, I was feeling it, man. And music is all about feelings, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I know my section. <laughs> so- Oh God, Jesus. Was your, was your immediate reaction to, to want to create a similar style of music or, you know, were you, how did you end up rapping and emulating this style? There's a big jump from becoming a fan to becoming a creator of this style of music. Uh, what was that journey like for you? So, so I, was, I was doing a little uh, rapping before I heard that. I was like just playing with words, playing with rhymes. But when I heard that, this immediately, immediately like uh, made me switch up my whole style. It, it gave me like a like a an, an old lane where I know I wanted to stay in like forever. So no matter what music I do, you will always hear that big big Memphis influence in it for sure, for real. It's so simple, and it's so simple to do, Skinny. Yes, so simple to do, and guess what? It's very I, simple, but also and, and, a very great and, thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, yeah, and, and that's and, what keeps it so classic. Yeah. Right. And just by us just talking right now, I think I'm coming to the conclusion that they said that I did what I did. I was just having fun, but I'm kind of leaning towards. I'm trying to figure this thing out myself. Okay. Yeah. But I'm trying to. I think it could have been created by someone else. Maybe, I don't know if they would have gave the drummer, you know, the drummer with the kick drum? Yeah. And the snare drum who played live, if they would have gave him a little bit more freedom, maybe. I'm just saying, I'm serious. I'm trying to figure this thing out and I am, Antonio Kimbrough, but I just so happened to be DJ Spanish Flat. <laughs> I was just having fun, okay? Yeah, so yeah. I'm figuring it out as we go also, you know? But, that, but I think that's what the people in Memphis always were doing. Like all the musicians in Memphis, even before the, the, the hip hop area, they were like freestyling in their music, you know? They were like, they don't have like a notes on a piece of paper. They were like jamming, they were like freestyling. So they always got that, that funk into it, you know? So that's uh, what I think makes Memphis so special that people always had the funk and they had the drama. They had the drama and the funk and they combined it. And that's what makes Memphis music, man. Right? So, so tell me Skinny, what was your um, proficiency as far as English was concerned when you began to fall in love with this music? Did it? help you learn English better? Were you already fairly fluent? Um, and as far as rapping, were you rapping mostly in German or rapping mostly in English? Uh, I, was on, I was only doing music uh, in German, mm -hmm. only and always, because that's my, my mother language, you know? So I'm, that's where I'm best in. So I always love to hear uh, the English music because I think the, the English language fits hip hop the most. It's perfect for it because you can play a lot with like the, the vocals and with like the, it's, it's great. And, but yeah, for me, it always was German and always will be because that's the, the easiest and uh, best way uh, to express myself to my people, you know? Because at the end, it, it's all about the sound, you know? It's about the flavor. It's not about like the actual meaning of words. It's about the sound, about the tension you create, you know what I'm saying? It was very astute. It was always German, but yeah, uh, 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 I, I like English a lot and uh, I learned a lot by myself. I learned some in school. I mean, in school, they don't really teach uh, the words you really need in Memphis, you know what I'm saying? So, so I was like, uh, back in the days, I was writing down all the Memphis words I didn't know. And uh, yeah, I asked my people, hey, you know what, that's, 
that means that means it was like a little time before the internet got big so i couldn't just google it i had to ask people yo what's a junt yo what that's what's uh, this meaning what does tether club mean you know what i'm saying so that's how i got into that and yeah today uh i'm happy to understand like nearly everything it feels great man yeah for sure and i keep practicing i mean i talk a lot with my my folks in memphis like every day so yeah uh, it's my second language. I, I, sometimes I dream uh, uh, in English words, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sorry, Especially when I'm in Memphis, I directly start dreaming in English. Oh, wow. So, Amazing. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, you know, you mentioned Three Six Mafia was your first introduction, and we'll talk a bit about Spanish Fly and your connection to DJ Paul and, and how that ball got rolling, uh, because I, I think that that's a, a direct connection to how uh, this music uh, continued to boom uh, Three Six Mafia, of course, uh, uh, I would go out on a limb to say is probably the most recognizable uh, act when you consider this sort of sound. And there's so much more to learn about when you when you branch out from there. Uh, who were some of the other artists that you were introduced to in an early period, or, or even now that that you're influenced by, um, who, who who do this style uh, that you appreciate? Okay, so um, to explain that, I must go a little bit more back. So um, Actually, uh, when I started like listening to Memphis music, uh, I listened before to German music, also inspired by Memphis rap. Uh, it were some some folks from Berlin City. They did like the Memphis style already uh, at the year like 2000, 2001. So I got a cassette tape from them, and I was listening to that cassette tape. Uh, which my older cousin gave me and I was asking him, hey man, that sounds so unique. Where do they got it from? And then he answered to me like, uh, listen to that 36 Mafia CD, okay? So then I immediately like uh, understand what like the German folks were trying to do. And I was with it, you know, because first I was like a fan of the German dudes and then from, from them influenced by them, I came back to their influence and it was just great, man. It blew my mind immediately. Yeah. Um, you know, I think one thing that surprised me getting to know Spanish Fly, and I would say he calls me nephew too. Now you can't just have nephew all by yourself. Now we it's all, all good, good, man. It's all good. Yeah, I got my nephew. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> we all, we all. I think are, we all got a lot of nephews in Memphis. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? A lot of nephews, a lot of cousins, a lot of family. You, you know go. what I'm saying? That's right. Go. That's, and that's right. And ultimately, ultimately, that's what it's going to end up being. We're going to all be on one accord. Absolutely. A lot of people wouldn't imagine that when you talk about a lot of the artists that are from uh, that cassette tape, out the trunk, underground Memphis era. Uh, Skinny, when you and I were kids, I know you're, you're just a couple of years older than me, but you know, I, I was here in Memphis and sort of can sort of pick out certain points. Oh, that's when such and such was on this road or that used to be there and this used to be there. That used to happen to the Pyramid or whatever the case. Or, you know, of sort of watch this music come out in real time. Um, but Spanish Fly doesn't really, or didn't really listen to a lot of those artists that came after him. He was, he was doing his own thing. Yeah. And sometimes that's just the case is that, you know, you might inspire a lot of people and not even be aware of it. Um, wow. and so, I know you know that. yeah, so we, we discussed it before, sure but did. Wow. DJ Paul tells the story. DJ Paul, uh, effectively sort of the, the, the leader of three, six mafia, uh, tells the story of, of meeting you for the first time and seeing you in a music store and saying, oh my gosh, that's DJ Spanish Fly. I'm mm -hmm. aware of his music and I'm aware of what, what he's done and I'm sort of emulating something that he's done. The reason I'm in this music store is that I'm trying to make music that sounds like his. Um, could you talk about your relationship with DJ Paul um, then when, when you met him for the first time, which I, I imagine it might have taken a while before you realized that this was somebody who's going to be uh, special and change the world and, and allow the world uh, in on this sort of Thing of yours and the sound of, that you helped create. Uh, but tell me about at least Three Six Mafia being one group that, that you do have a relationship with that, that, you, that is inspired by your work. Well, I pretty much with Paul got really, really uh, what we always been tight. You know, our birthday on the same day. Um, <laughs> and he just always reached out to me, hey, you know what I'm saying? So I always, I went on adopting him, <laughs> like, you know, everybody else. And uh, just pretty much, we just cool. You know, they always pay homage and and we just 
keep it like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just we just cool. But you've been on the road with them before as well. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. With few shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, few shows. Well, let me ask you this: while we're on the, the topic, and I know we're we're not necessarily going around in chronological order, uh, when you saw that Memphis Jugging video earlier, uh, you know what was the culture that created uh, dances? You know, when people think of classic hip hop in New York, they think of break dance, mm-hmm. uh, and and they see that you know hip hop is a culture, and there's several pillars of what's going on in 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 the the first boom, the golden era of hip hop. There's break dancing, there's the spoken word, there's the beatboxing, there's the DJ, and there's the production, there's the fashion, there's the, the getting up on the wall with your graffiti. Yes, uh, in Memphis, how did music get that piece, that own that, their own signature dancing, and, and what was the sort of the club life like and the culture that shaped around the music from your perspective? Well, as far as the gangster walk, uh... Which Jukin and the Gangster Walk are <laughs> interchangeable. It's, it's, interchangeable. Right, yeah, yeah. Because it was first it was buck jumping. Right. Then it went to the gangster walk. Mm-hmm. And then I believe it trans to the Jukin. We got a lot of words chopping, chopping all, you know, right. all sorts yeah. of stuff. You know, over time people describe it in different ways. But my understanding is that it started with the, the Bovan family and, and being in the club and, and the, the dance they were doing. Everybody wanted to do the dance they were doing. Mm-hmm. You do you want to elaborate on that? Well, that's kind of true. Um, they, 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 that's kind of true. Uh, it started with just a lot of rough people. Uh, it, initially, you can say it did, you know, started with Michi. Michi and... Uh, Michi, Michi Bowman was and, uh, a, a hustler in Memphis that yeah, had a larger family around. Yeah, uh, you can kind of, yeah, you can kind of kind of say that Michi, uh, but, you know, I'll just say all the hustlers you know, wasn't that many hustlers back in the day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, but um, yeah, and it, and, it, and it just started from there. And of course, you know, it's an energized energy dance. It's an energized dance. Uh, back long time ago, disco was coming up. When I came in, it was disco. So, you know, doing the buck jump, juking gangster walk during a disco set is what I was saying, original, odd, different, is something that people don't do. And um, uh, and they actually set out a certain time you can do this dance, not during the disco when they dance and uh, you have to do it in a certain time, like sure. when I come up and play. Right. The gangster tune. Right. So before, onion. before you, what was it? Ray the J. Like, who are some of the people who were playing? They were playing that disco style of music. There were other people, other DJs, correct? Playing that disco style of music. Yes. And uh, absolutely. Before there was Memphis rap. There was what, like, sir, mix a lot. Like what? Like there were there were other songs that people were kind of the Trigger Man, and I mean, so before Memphis had its own sound, there were other hip hop songs that kind of had a tempo and had a style and a feel that eventually the Memphis sound sort of grew out of. Is that correct? I mean, Posse's on Broadway, Gore-Tex. But that came after. Okay. That I think, you know, like, I think I made Smoke and Onion in 87, early 87. Mm-hmm. So we would have to do, you know, like what I would do. I would look at the record and see when this sir makes a lot come out of that song. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I don't, I mean, we right there, we right there on the line. We may have to do some research, but we right there on the line. Okay. But it, it wasn't too much um, like that, but it was, you know. All right. Yeah. Well, Skinny, let me follow it to you, you know, becoming an artist and, and sort of transitioning from, a, I guess, what you described to me as sort of more of a classic hip hop sound and into a more Memphis sound. How'd you wrap your mind around how to be able to rap like that? And and what sort of beats to find? Were you doing your own beats? Were you reaching out to other people in Germany to, to get that kind of sound? Or uh, what, what was that process like? Yeah, so, so first, when I was like still a kid, uh, it was all local. So we did everything by ourselves. We, we try like uh, to master like the styles, you know? We, we tried our own ways with it. And yeah, but at the end, I had to reach out like uh, through whole Germany to find uh, uh, only the best and uh, these people who really felt and bought the same way than I did. Because what I wanted to do was not just to, 
I, I didn't want to copy that Memphis sound, but I wanted to like uh, 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 transmit it with my own styles and my own message and my own thoughts of it and make it an own sound, but which is very clearly influenced uh, or heavily influenced by Memphis sound, yeah? So it took me like, for real, it took me like around 10 years till my actually first cassette release to like, uh, to like get to that sound because before I was trying this and that, but it all didn't match the way I wanted to be it. And on my first release in like 2015, it was the first time I could make the sound I really wanted to do for so long. So yes, it definitely took me like a, a very long time to get into it. It was not something I came up with within the two or three days. It took like a lot of years till I came there, until I was able to make that sound with that heavy Memphis influenced, uh, how, uh, that's how I wanted uh, to sound, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I know that Germany isn't, it isn't not, it isn't like Germany doesn't have hip hop. I mean, I know that hip hop is fairly popular all over the world, and particularly in, in, the, in the cities in Germany, um, where you looked at differently for being sort of not interested in this sort of pure, Boom bap, Wu Tang Clan, Cool G rap kind of vibe, but really being influenced by this 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 town. It's not quite a small town. Memphis is is is, is fairly fairly large metropolitan area, but uh, this this one specific style of of, of rap that isn't necessarily uh, what most purists purists would consider uh, mainline hip hop. Yeah. So so in my region, in my area, I definitely was a big outsider with that sound. It was like, literally, it was my cousin and me. We, we was bumping that Memphis sound hard, but the rest didn't really understand it. And I think it took them till like 2017, 2018 in my area to like really understand what, what I'm doing. So like in 2016, some shops in Heidelberg started to sell some cassette tapes of mine. So that's where I like first uh, recognized that, um, people were like getting more into it because before that I definitely was like a big outsider, but yeah, I think it was, it was good. It was good for me because it helped uh, uh, um, to, to pave the way for me to do it all on my own, you know, and not being like uh, 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 with a lot of other people uh, who were going in some other direction. So I always did what I wanted to do and I kept it straight with it because since like I heard this first, Three Six Mafia CD. I was a Memphis fanatic, and I fanatically went on my way by myself on my own. And yeah, that's that's how it all started. Yeah, it took a couple of years, definitely. 2018 is around the time that you actually got a chance to travel to Memphis. How'd that come about? Uh, I, I first traveled to Memphis in 2015. That was my first uh, my first uh, time in, in Memphis, uh, and I did it spontaneously. Uh, I met some 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 good, some guy, which is now my, my second family, my big brother, my bro for life. I met him in the Facebook group, uh, which was about uh, selling and trading cassette tapes. And he he is from Memphis, and he got like he got like a little suitcase where he got like a hundred cassette tapes in it. And I wanted to buy that suitcase, like really. I really was like scratching together all my last money because I wanted that suitcase. But uh, sadly it got stolen uh, uh, during a house raid. But yeah, that guy, uh, uh, me and him, we talked on Facebook and he was like, uh, hey, uh, you, you gotta come to Memphis one day. And I was like, I'm ready. And he was like, yeah, I'm ready too. You're always welcome. So I went uh, and booked the flight two weeks later. And uh, that was my first time in Memphis, 2015. And in 2018, I did my second until now last Memphis trip for like about four weeks. It was over four weeks uh, uh, for, the, for the Christmas holidays because I wanted uh, to spend one time uh, the Christmas days in the, in the USA because I never did before in my life. So that was my, my second trip. And that was like the trip where I like really uh, connected with all the, uh, the OGs and originators uh, who I'm with right now, yeah. You, you met some of those people, I guess, through the same guy, the guy that sold you the cassettes or was going to sell you the cassettes? He was connected so, to what did you say? The guy who's, who was uh, trying to sell you the cassettes, yeah. he was to those artists, that was your connection to those artists? Yeah, definitely. So he, he already got some connections to those artists. 
uh, he, he was uh, or he is well known between them. Uh, he's friends with a lot of them. So he like really introduced me to them personally because I knew a lot of them uh, before over the internet from Facebook and so on. But he like really, we drove there, went to their homes, sat there and, and really, really like could talk personally about all these questions I had, which I don't like to do over the internet because it's always uh, different if you talk to someone uh, eye to eye, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, he, he like introduced me. And from there, uh, through these, through all these new people I got to new in Memphis, uh, I made my own way because from there now I was independent. I could go on myself, but yeah, I always stay with him when I'm in Memphis, but sadly he's moving to, to Florida right now in like uh, one week. So I have to find a new spot, but I already got one. I got lots of families. I got you, when you, get, I got you when you get here, man. Uh, I appreciate that, man. I would slide through, man. That's for sure. <laughs> no doubt. So, I mean, what what was life seem like? You know, you, you became pretty popular among some of these guys who uh, really haven't had much outside of the. I mean, cassette uh, notoriety. I mean, uh, being able to to sell cassettes in the nineteen nineties. But none of these guys uh, have had much major label success, or, or, mm -hmm. or you know, maybe even made the jump from cassette to, to CDs in in a way that is particularly notable. Yeah. Uh, what was it like? What were your first impressions of, of the culture, of the people, and and of the actual physical like geography, the, the spaces? Uh, I see you use the pyramid on one of your uh, album covers. I mean, these are these are landmarks halfway across the world that you know people know. About the pyramids in Giza, or they may know about the the the, the Leaning Tower of Pisa, or uh, you know the Louvre. You know, like you know, the, Memphis doesn't have. Well, I guess Graceland might be. Graceland, you know, yeah. But uh, <laughs> I'm sure you went to like some some barbecue restaurants and and saw a lot of things that people might not know of the world over. Uh, what were your impressions? So, so, so my impressions of Memphis. Is that what you what you're asking me? Yeah, the people of the places and what you saw. Okay, so so definitely Memphis is the place where I want to be. I love that city because that city is living that kind of lifestyle. I appreciate a lot. But it's also living that kind of lifestyle I hate the most. But both of them have to come together to make that kind of sound, to make these kind of expressions. So. Memphis for me was like, it was a, a complete different world from what I knew before. I mean, I have been to the US before, but not in the South. I wasn't like New York and I, I didn't like it. it. was not my thing. But, but when I came to the South or especially to Memphis, when I came to the, to the countryside, I was really like uh, feeling that that's the way I really want to live freely because I like freedom a lot. A lot and, I felt that freedom for the first time in my life for real in Memphis because Memphis has like, it has the soul, it's the soul. You can feel your own soul and the soul there. And that's just a feeling which I really can't get in Germany all the time. I can, I can get it sometimes when I'm in the studio a lot in, with my folks, you know, and we're doing our thing. But in Memphis, I really can be the, that, that person or that artist that I always wanted to be in my heart, you know, yeah. Let's talk a bit again about Germany. Me, Jared, sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt, sorry to interrupt. Please forgive me, but I want to I wanna open it up a little bit to questions from the audience so we can all interact if that's okay. Um, I've got one question to start with. This was sent in before we even started. <laughs> it was sent in at 4.20 p.m. And uh, it has seven questions. One of them I think is really funny. Um, Skinny, do you have any advice for beginner American rappers who are interested in rapping in German? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh -huh. okay. I know, that's why I asked it. So, 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 so I got one advice for y'all, for y'all Americans out there trying to rap on German. Don't break your tongue, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't break it. Don't break it. <laughs> so, so actually, uh, uh, one of my best friends uh, and partners in Memphis, um, shout out Carter, 
uh, he's really good at German because he had German in school and I talk a lot with him uh, on German. Um, so, so my advice uh, is like, you have to like really hard to stay behind it. You have to really like to practice. And yeah, but like I said, don't, don't break your time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've got another question or two from, uh, from Sophia, uh, Sophia Han. Uh, question number one, uh, Skitty, just like keep it, you don't have to keep it clean, but you know, like don't, don't, don't keep it too, too dirty. Uh, and that is, what is some of your favorite, your favorite, well, you know, I mean, we gotta be somewhat unsteady. Um, first of all, what is some of your favorite Memphis slang? And secondly, once this COVID is over, will you perform in Memphis? Okay, okay. So when it comes to slang, there are two words which I love the most. First, it's Maine, because Maine is just the greatest world, a word in the world because it fits to everything. And I really like I really like rock that word over here. Really, I really like introduce that word to like a bigger audience here and now all my friends, all my people, all my folks, they always be like main, 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 people love it. And the second greatest word from Memphis is definitely jumped because jumped is such a word. You can use it for everything and on everything with everything. So main and jumped, thank you Memphis for that. <laughs> <laughs> and when are you gonna perform here? Okay, so so uh, actually, I, I'm, I don't know if I performed in Memphis. We was at the club. I don't know if I performed there. Maybe it was too high. But hell yeah, when I'm coming back to Memphis, I got like so many songs with other Memphis OGs. I'm always ready to hit the stage. So when I'm there, throw me a microphone and I'm gonna get bird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what else do we have here. I'm just looking in the chat. Um, I think we've covered some of this, but maybe you can elaborate a little bit more. Um, what is it, Skinny, about, about hip hop and about Memphis culture that resonates with you and makes you, made you want to first create hip hop music? So we talked about this a little bit, but maybe you can like go into more detail. So for real, I never really thought about why I started doing music. I just did it. I, I was like, uh, I think music was the only way I ever really wanted to do in my life. So it just came naturally, you know? I was just like, I was on a little boat on the river, floating down the river. And at some point uh, I jumped on land and it was Southern land, it was Memphis. <laughs> Nice, nice. I have a, I have a question. Um, I've seen it used all over the place, uh, and I don't really know how it works. So I feel, you know, somewhat um, insecure in my in my professorial role. Tell me about the word Brett. Like I keep hearing fetus Brett. Oh, so so you want to know what the fetus Brett means? Yeah, I mean, I know what bread okay. means, but fetus bread is like... Fetus bread, I, I try to translate in English. It's called like... That's my partner. We like, we started a German Memphis influence. We did. We did. We did. That's my partner for life. Big <laughs> shout out to German <laughs> <laughs> Oh <laughs> okay, so we, so we got the fat. It's called like a, a, a fat fat piece of wood, and I would a fat piece of wood is what I call when I like really take a deep inhale from the from the blood, yeah. and like it hits me right in the head, and I'm like, Ooh. that's what I call the fattest bread. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. Good to know. Good to know. Duly noted. Um, and moving along. Um, question from Akil. Um, Skinny, what are, if any, criticisms that you have received as a German rapper 
uh, doing Memphis sounds. Are you are you concerned about perpetuating negative hip hop stereotypes? I really don't care. I'm I'm sorry, I can't answer that questions. I really don't care. I'm just doing my thing. I, I'm doing this for me and for my people, you know. So I'm I'm cool. I'm cool with love. I'm cool with hate. You know, like it's it's all good. I, I like I like input. You know what I'm saying? I like. I like all, uh, uh, how do you say in English? Um, um, I like all opinions. I think it's always important to have an opinion and it doesn't matter if it's a good opinion or bad, just give me some feedback, you know? Feedback is very important, yeah. And the money bag. Yeah, that's why we're here. And the money bag. <laughs> the money bag. The money bag is also very important. <laughs> Right, from Chauncey Porter. What current Memphis rappers are you listening to? Uh, okay, current Memphis rappers. Uh, definitely uh, the whole Paper Root Empire camp. Um, I'm also listening to a lot of Lil Migo. Uh, so there's this one YouTube channel in Memphis. It's called Wicked Films and he has like all the local rappers on it. So basically I check on it like every two or three days. And uh, yeah, I mean, even now Memphis got its very own unique sound. You click play, you directly hear it's Memphis sound. So yeah, I'm pretty much with all the Memphis artists right now too. We're not doing only that old school style, but yeah, there's also that uh, dude called Duke Deuce. He doing that crunk music again, man, that shit is hard. And Hit Kid, he's doing these beats, these gangster ass Memphis old school style beats, but with like a new wave in it. Yeah, I'm also with that. And we're doing a lot of shit with that too in the near future, for sure, for sure. All right, I've got another question here from uh, Orca Love, uh, who I'm thinking is asking from Germany. Um, and he, his question is, is pretty specific, but maybe you could talk a little bit more generally too about, about collaboration among Memphis style German rappers. But let me, before you start, let me, yeah. let me give Orga Love his voice and say, his question is, when does the underground tape with Izuma gonna be released? Uh, he says March is clearly over. Although I think, I think not quite yet, but it's coming. Okay. Uh, and then also, if you could talk more about like collaboration, Memphis style hip hop in Germany, is there community? Do you work together? Yes, yes, definitely. So, so in Memphis, there's uh, not the Memphis in Germany. There's a big, big uh, community when it comes to Memphis rap, because like I said, like uh, six, seven years ago, we all started from like zero. We was more deeper than underground. We was the underground under the underground. <laughs> so uh, back in the days, like all the different camps, they really didn't like know each other, but uh, a lot of them met the first time or their first times through me because I was like traveling around Germany, uh, visiting all my folks and to, uh, try to get my, my, my tape uh, ready, you know. So, so yeah, there's like uh, the scene does uh, know uh, each other very well. And it works very good. It's all love. It's all love to everybody out there, man. I love all my my Memphis inspired, Memphis loving folks. So so yeah, we, we get along and I can say there's a lot of tapes uh, that will uh, uh, come up this year and they will uh, be out soon. So be on the lookout. Uh, yes. Yes. All right. All right. Um, got one time for one or two more and then we should probably wrap it up, uh, but one question I see here from Alpe uh, is, as Atlanta is considered to be the epicenter of Southern rap music, why does the Memphis sound have your priority? What, what's the difference for you? Uh, and also maybe like Fly too, if you could also talk about that. That's, that's an interesting you know, question to get both perspectives on. Give it to him one more time, Robert. Sure, F first fly and then skinny. The question is, um, Atlanta is considered generally to be uh, the epicenter of Southern rap music. Um, what's the difference for you between the Memphis sounds and, and hip hop from, from Atlanta? Memphis sounds and hip hop from Atlanta. 
Yeah. Ooh. And then skinny sim question after. Ooh. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> it's that's kind of tough. Um, I really, I that's just kind of tough for me to ask, answer that. I mean, the difference between their music and our music, uh, is that what it is? So you, do you mind if I if I jump in there? Of um, course, no, go for it. I think I think maybe Skinny, I mean maybe Fly might be a little close to it uh, because this, I mean, you were talking about his, his this is his baby here, uh, and again, as he said earlier, he was just having fun making his music. I don't think that he necessarily had a statement for the entire South and the entire land. I don't want to speak for you, but. From my perspective as a writer and someone who studies the music, um, the Atlanta sound that we know as crunk is very much influenced uh, by the Memphis buck sound that you may be familiar with from listening to, to Fly's recordings from the late 80s, or early 90s, to listening to Skinny Finster now. Um, but it's a bit uh, of a the Atlanta interpretation of that is a bit more polished, is uh, is made with a major label flair and, and studio sound in mind because they had the advantage of having those resources in their community. Um, but, they, but the Atlanta sound, I don't think I want to make a mistake about saying that the Atlanta sound isn't based necessarily on solely the Memphis sound. They were very much influenced by the Miami sound as well. Uh, prior to having that crunk sound, they had what we call a bass sound or a booty shake sound, mm -hmm. uh, which was based on the Uncle Luke's of the world and, and that kind of music that came from Miami. I think that you have to sort of look at Atlanta as a cultural epicenter for all Black people in the South uh, and all Southerners truly, but all Black people in the South definitely. Um, and, you know, so Outcast is sort of separate from this tradition that we think of when you think of Memphis's influence on the Atlanta sound. They're prior to that. They're different from that. There's a different sound. There's a there's something else there. Um, <laughs> something and, else there. And, and, and yeah. you know, there were other seminal Atlanta artists that came from New York or were influenced by New York. So they, they're influenced by a lot of areas. But I think that when the when when it when the dominant hip hop um, sort of forces, major labels, magazines, whichever, started to take notice of Atlanta, the popular sound of Atlanta at that time was based on Memphis. So there are several different things going on in Atlanta that Atlanta sort of can take claim to. Uh, but Atlanta became a huge force in the dominant narrative of, of hip hop at the time that they were really taking a lot of cues from Memphis. And, and uh, just like Spanish flock and remember that there were people in the service who were actually stationed in Germany who might have had more direct influence on someone like Skinny. Um, DJ Paul and Juicy J and a lot of them got up and drove to Atlanta and passed out their music uh, specifically. And, and so our music did travel in a similar way. But I think, you know, and I, at, the risk of, at the risk of going much longer, you have to look at Atlanta and understand that this is a very similar to a, a larger city in Germany might be a kind of a global metropolis. Um, and also what you can't forget is in 1996, they had the most global sporting event that there ever was. The, I mean, the, the Olympics were in Atlanta in 1996, right at the same time that they began to get their thing together and really sort of build their-, their The Olympics? Yeah, the, right as they were building an infrastructure for the music industry. Oh, wow. The Olympics happened in that city. So it was big. there are a lot of things going on in Atlanta. The Olympics, the music, and also Black colleges, where Black people were coming from all over the U.S. to share what made them special. All that was happening at one time. And so Memphis was a big part of that. Uh, freak Nick. The Freak Nick. Was just, <laughs> the Freak Nick, which was basically the Black... <laughs> The Freak Nick was, was the nickname for the Black Spring Break where Black people would come from, from Memphis, from New Orleans, from, from parts of Florida, from uh, Virginia. They were all from Texas, descend all on Atlanta. And, and what year was this about? In, in... We're talking about 89 to about 95. Mm -hmm. So you know they were taking, the Memphis people was taking the DJ Spanish Black cassettes to Atlanta. So all that to say is that Atlanta has has borrowed a lot from different parts of hip hop all over the U.S. and 
right when Lil John happened, right when Pastor Troy happened, right when a lot of this, right when the when the industry took notice. Well, you forgot a name in Atlanta. Yeah, and it's kind of like what's his name? Oh, R. Kelly. Robert is kind of like what we gonna share with Robert. He forgot a name, Robert. He called all those names, but it's one other name that rung a bell to me when you asked asked that question about Atlanta music and Memphis music. And the reason why I got stuck was because you got to remember, I had already did the damage. I mean, DJ Spanish Fly had already did the damage. The damage was done back in 86, 87. For real, for real. I know that much. Okay. <laughs> um, they didn't call Jazzy Faye's Jazzy name. Faye. Yeah. Jazzy Faye is a key factor to this thing. Mm -hmm. Simple mm -hmm. reason because he was a Memphian and his mom stayed in Georgia and he had to go to Georgia. But trust me, he got Spanish flyerized before <laughs> he got to Georgia. And you yeah. know who his father is. Yeah, yeah. So when you step in the room, Jazzy yeah. Faye's father yeah. is uh, that's just like James Alexander of the Barcades, which was the a stats funk group. So that's Thank just you, like my that, so that's just like my daughter Marquisha, who stays in Dallas, Texas. Now that's Jazzy Faye's solo debut on Electra, which came out in 1990. Mm -hmm. uh, he was he was in Sacramento for a little bit too. Okay. Oh, all right. But, yeah. So yeah. So I mean. Uh, that's something to think about uh, for is Atlanta music and Memphis music. He's known as one of the uh, most important Atlanta like, producers, but he's from Memphis. It's like what he said. It's like what he said. I'll cast him and all them. Woo, woo, woo. It's another world. Like, I can't even say nothing, but oh, I praise the, what those guys are doing. But also, Jay, but, this is James Alexander. This is Jazzy Faye's father. But next to him mm -hmm. is Willie Hall, who was the father of Gangsta Pat, who was the first Memphis rapper to get signed to a major label, Atlantic Records. So the two of them are in this group. Wow. So, 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 in, other words, so in other words, that's just like Michael Jackson's them sons and daughters. They get the red carpet immediately coming through the door. They can just pick the city. So I'm just saying that that's a good thing, though. They are talented, and I love them to death. But I'm saying when you're asking me the question as far as Atlanta music, Memphis music, we are two twin cities. I labeled that back in 86, 87, and we're two twin cities. I'm a son of a preacher. Uh, I got it around my father. He was blind. I went everywhere. I went places that Martin Luther King and my father set up and talked. You know, that's in that's later on in other, other movies and things. But anyway, uh, Atlanta, I feel like that they are our, 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 our bro, our sister. Like, they are, our, they are Memphis. Like for real, so yeah, I give respect. You know, I, I, give respect. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's, I mean that that's a that is a, a very very thorough answer. Uh, when, <laughs> Sorry, we went all. No, over no, no. It's good. It's good. It's good. That's why. That's why I asked the questions. Mm -hmm. um, I think we got time maybe for one more, and then we have to cue the sad violins um, and end this. But uh, yes, I agree with Orca Love that DJ Spanish Fly and the whole Memphis scene should get a biopic on Netflix. I think that is a very astute statement. Well, he um, has a he has an episode of, of Netflix that's on already. Oh, from yeah. The, the hip hop, what's the name? Hip Hop Evolution. Yeah. Season three. Season four. It's four. Hip Hop Evolution. Season four. The Southern Lab with me, DJ Spanish Fly, Lil John, Jazzy Faye. Jazzy Faye, DJ Paul, and you'll see a whole other artists. I mean, uh, 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 the chat. Um, but go watch it. Squeaky. It's squeaky. Oh, go Pretty watch Tony. it, everyone. Pretty Tony. <laughs> yeah, it's on, it's on <laughs> Netflix. It's Pretty called Tony. The Hip Hop Evolution, Season 4, right. The Southern Lab. And Dr. Heike Poster just uh, also wrote it in, in the chat here, so we have that to refer to. All right, last question, um, because I think I want to end with this one, because I think this, for me, this is a lot of this is really about community it's about like trying to bring people together from all over the place from germany from memphis from elsewhere and uh and the question is you know what what do you think uh skinny is is the best way or what are some really good ways to connect in memphis and with germany uh to to find knowledgeable rappers and people who are passionate about rap and where can one basically 
both in Memphis and in Germany for you. Where can one find the community and start establishing meaningful connections? Uh, who want to go first? Go ahead, is, it, is, it only, is, it, is it only towards me? I thought it was your question, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so here's the thing. The only person you need to find is yourself. You only need yourself, you know? So, so because that's like a lot of the Memphis artists started also. They only had themselves, they had their folks, you know, they started in a small basement. So that's how, how you, so that's, that's how it is to get up. You have to believe in yourself that you have to start with yourself because only you as a person can start something. I mean, other people, they can push you, but you have to start it. And from there, I mean, it's 2021, you got the internet, you will find folks all over the internet. And then you have to take the next step and buy you a plane ticket and go there. Wherever they are, you have to go there. Yes. <laughs> right. Right. Like it, but but one right. thing, but one thing uh, for for all the for all the Germans who want to go to Memphis and want to go to the hood, do not go to Memphis. It's not safe. It's not a playground. It's the devil's playground. <laughs> I'm, nah, just no, no. I'm just nah, I I'm just yeah. with that. Go. I'm just with that. It's, yeah. like, it, it's like it's like that. You can't just go to Memphis. You have you have to know folks. You have to put in a lot of time. You have to put in a lot of love. You have to be hundred percent real man and then you might try it but like i said <laughs> it's not a game this thing can get serious we're talking about very very serious music we're talking about very very serious people man that's not a game that's what i learned in memphis too and th this is very important for life because life is not a game i mean you can play it but you can't win life because at the end you know what i'm saying what's going down but yeah that's one thing I also want to say. It's not easy to go to Memphis. And even when I was in Memphis, I had a lot of good times, but I also got in some situations, and I only say situations, which were like different, but yeah. So, so that's why I named my, my album like uh, Firepower, because yeah, I, I met this Firepower in Memphis too, man, but it made me uh, the person who I am today, you know, so. I think. I, I, ju I, just, love, I just love all the all the, um, um, the influences I got from Memphis because Memphis really showed me like how the world is going. And I think it's a good uh, point to start from there. And, yeah. and that's one thing too, for everyone who's on this, this call from Germany, if you want to come to Memphis, let us know, come, we're yeah. here. You, you we're definitely here got to have some people love, in Memphis. You got to know some locals to be safe everywhere. I mean, you can go to Graceland, it's nice. But yeah, when you touch North or South Memphis, better be aware, it's not a game out there. <laughs> well, we're, we're here and we, we welcome all of you. Uh, and it's really, really great that you, all, that you all were able to participate and ask some questions and listen to DJ Spanish Fly and Jerry Boyd and Skinny Finsta. So thank you very much uh, from the Department of World Languages at Memphis, from the Marcus Orr Center for the Humanities. Uh, much obliged to you all. Respect Robert. and cheers. Hey, Roberts. Hey. Hey.